An elderly lady by the name of Susan Merck reached out and emailed a Republican Virginia lawmaker, State Delegate Tag Greason, which is a hilarious name if I don't say so myself. And uh, she spoke about how we need to expand the Medicaid program under Obamacare because there are just so many people that don't have health insurance and don't have health care and aren't covered and they need it. And the exchange that follows, I think, is very telling in terms of how politicians really view their job and how they really view their constituents. So Merck said, it is imperative that you support the Medicaid expansion. Greeson said the law has, quote, as already proven to be inefficient, costly, and an utter disaster. So Merck responded, this reply is pitiful. It's nothing but partisan rhetoric, false accusations, and invalid excuses. I will be sure to vote you out the next time you're up for re-election. And then Greeson went off. He said, quote, Pitiful because I am willing to enter a dialogue with you? All you liberals are the same. As soon as someone dis doesn't agree with you, you shut down communication, call the other side names, take your ball and go home. I understand and am saddened by this approach, at the federal level, but your reaction below is the problem. I did not have to write you back, but I did. I think discussing differences is the only way to solve the problem. How intellectually lazy are you? You are the problem. Good luck to you. You cannot insult your way to victory. If you are not willing to have a civil discussion, please do not write me again. It is a waste of my time. Now, again... I think this story tells you quite a bit about the way politics functions in America. So look at the multiple ironies. He says, uh, oh, yeah, when somebody doesn't agree with you, you shut down communication. And then just a few lines later, he says, please do not write me again. Who's shutting down communication, big guy? It's all you that's shutting down communication. It's not her. You're the one that's getting your panties in a bunch and saying, don't talk to me because you don't agree with me. You're guilty of all the things that you're accusing her of being guilty of. And furthermore, he said, I did not have to write you back, but I did. No, 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 no. See, that's the mindset right there. The mindset is, I, a politician, I am working for my donors. I am working for the corporations and the rich and the special interests that paid me. I'm not actually representing my constituents and the people of the United States of America. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. The people in my state, the people in my town, <laughs> fuck them, man. I'm representing, give me money, 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 and I'm representing you guys. So his idea is, oh, what, I'm supposed to listen to you just because you're a constituent and you vote? Yes! Yes, that's exactly what a politician is supposed to do! Of course you're supposed to listen to your constituents! Of course, that's your main concern! She is your boss, you dumbass! What, did you sleep through day one of social studies or history class or civics class? What a monumental fool this guy is! It's really embarrassing! But then the final point I'll make here is that for him to say to her, how intellectually lazy are you? Wow, again, the irony is overwhelming. Remind me again who's intellectually lazy. Researchers from Harvard University and City University of New York did a study and, quote, they projected that 423,000 fewer diabetics would receive medication if you don't expand Medica uh, Medicaid under Obamacare, 659,000 women who are in need of mammograms won't get them, 3.1 million women who should receive regular pap smears miss out, and here is the most overwhelming, mind-numbing, insane number of all, 17,000 Americans will die directly as a result of states deciding not to expand Medicaid under Obamacare. Okay, this isn't a debatable issue, son. You know, he's getting mad at her. <laughs> You're intellectually lazy. You don't do the hard work to figure out the reality, and you just hate me because I disagree with you. No, she's imploring you to expand Medicaid because she knows the facts. She understands these things. That's why she's telling you, hey, it's a big deal. A lot of people are relying on these things. It's actually a life or death matter. 
You're the one that's intellectually lazy because if you did your due diligence, if you did your homework, if you did your reading, which you should do because you're a fucking politician and you should know these things, then you would know that 17,000 people are gonna die unless you get your fucking act together. It's amazing, man. I mean, this guy, he's such a loathsome human being, such a loathsome human being from not understanding what his job is that, of course, he does have to respond to her and listen to her because she's a constituent to saying that, oh, you shut down communication when you don't agree, and then he does that, to saying that she's intellectually lazy when he's the one that doesn't know these life-or-death facts, these numbers that are not debatable. It's a fact! End of debate! It's a fact! People are gonna die if you don't expand it. And you're up there arrogantly saying, well, what are you talking about? It's better to not expand it. What are you, stupid? No, you're stupid! You didn't read the studies, dipshit! Yeah, I'm... Um I'm done with this story, but just know stuff like this really gets under my skin because here you can see the real mental process that goes on with a lot of elected officials, especially Republicans.